to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Tuesday, July 1st, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the U.S. government's new scheme to silence the Snowden leaks. Then, the walls have eyes. Smart lights are linked with cameras. And Facebook manipulates users' emotions. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. When I say that, I see comments on YouTube going, how dare you bash blind people? After announcing that he would bypass Congress yet again to take executive action and fix the immigration crisis, Obama has another announcement for Congress. So sue me. Now, this is an aggressive tone that Obama took in the face of a lawsuit threat from House Speaker John Boehner over his use of executive orders. The president called the suit a stunt, saying, I'm not going to apologize for trying to do something while they are doing nothing. Of course, it's everyone else's fault, not Obama's fault. But Obama says that he will act on his own to address weaknesses in the nation's immigration system because, according to him, the majority of the American people want to see immigration reform done. But according to the latest Gallup poll, only one in five Americans want to see additional immigration, while two in five Americans want less. That's 41 percent who would like to see a decrease in immigration and only 22 percent who would like to see it increase. And it's actually less than the percentage of Democrats who want it reduced, which is only 32 percent, according to that poll. But Obama also wants to lay the blame on Republicans in Congress, who he says they've voted and blocked everything that's tried to be done to help the middle class. But according to this shocking new study that was conducted by the Center for Immigration Studies, American-born workers have had a net loss in jobs since 2000, while all of the jobs created in that time have gone to immigrants. Millions of new jobs, according to this study, were created since 2000 in the U.S. There was a net gain of 5.7 million jobs during those 14 years. It went from 17 million in 2000 to 22.8 million in 2014. But the overall net effect was that 100% of the job growth went to immigrants and 0% went to workers born in the USA. Now, despite the scandal of so few jobs for Americans, the legislation being pushed by Democrats for the so-called immigration reform, say it's going to vastly expand job opportunities for immigrants at the expense of American-born workers. So, so much for wanting to help the middle class. Now, Republican Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama calls these findings shocking and says it represents a dramatic indictment of immigration policy in Washington. And he says, the sensible, conservative, fair thing to do after 40 years of record immigration is to slow down, allow assimilation to occur, allow wages to rise, and to help workers of all backgrounds rise together into the middle class. Meanwhile, thanks to the executive orders that Obama had already enacted on his own dealing with immigration, we are set to see some 100,000 unaccompanied minors illegally crossing the border this year bringing with them untold contagious diseases. Now, legal immigrants are always required to undergo medical screening, but these kids, uh, they have no medical screening as well as no vaccine records. And of course, if they do bring with them some contagious diseases that have already been eradicated here in the U.S., Americans will not have an immunity against it. And of course, that's setting us up for a possible outbreak. Well, now a Texas judge is giving these illegal immigrants a welcome to America, basically weighing vaccinations for any legal aliens that are being detained and processed at several locations in Texas's southernmost county. The elected official said he's concerned for public health and claimed that the county is prepared to weather the cost of vaccinating illegal immigrants that are showing signs of illness. Now, there's a county health team advising the judge. They say at this time there is no immediate health worry related to the immigrant surge, but they did express concerns that immigrants often undergo rapid processing and medical exams, which those can fail to spot communicable diseases. Of course, we have Border Patrol working overtime to get these people processed quickly so they can drop them off at the bus station and send them further into the interior. 
So uh, on that Facebook page for that county, it's getting a lot of backlash. Residents don't want to see their tax dollars going to immunize those who should be being deported while they're struggling to afford flu vaccines for their own families. Now, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention has repeatedly been ignoring requests from Border Patrol unions to come and do something about this. And later in the show, Joe Biggs is actually going to be on the phone with the CDC to find out what, if anything, they are doing to protect American citizens from a potential public health threat. Well, according to the latest Snowden leaks, the NSA is monitoring the entire world. And that is including the Five Eyes countries that the U.S. has long had a no-spying agreement with. Now, that obviously isn't really that much of a surprise at this point. But what is surprising is that Glenn Greenwald was set to release his most shocking NSA revelations to date. He was going to be releasing the names of those that the NSA has been spying on. Well, earlier today, Greenwald tweeted that he would be publishing the story tonight at midnight. And then eight hours later, he tweeted that after three months working on our story, the U.S. government today suddenly began making new last-minute claims, which we intend to investigate before publishing. Now, many responded that it's a trap and that the government is dishonestly and illegally censoring Greenwald. At the same time, whistleblowing site Cryptome announced that all of the Snowden documents will be released in July, and they say it's supposedly in order to avert a war. Cryptome tweeted on its official feed, July is when war begins unless headed off by Snowden full release of crippling intel. After war begins, not a chance of release. Warmongers are on a rampage. So yes, citizens holding Snowden docs will do the right thing. So what exactly are these documents that they are set to release? Now, this isn't what Glenn Greenwald had been working on. He said he was only going to be releasing the documents that concerned American citizens and what they needed to be aware of that their government was up to. He didn't want to release anything that posed a national security threat. But here, Cryptome is saying war will begin in July if these documents are not released. And you can take a look around and you can see Israel and Palestine, there are bombs going off right now today. Ukraine once again started their military offensive at the end of the 10-day ceasefire. The new IS leader has called on Muslims to ramp up jihad during Ramadan. They're parading around a Scud missile. And of course, America is involving itself in all of these foreign affairs while we're trying to deal with our own crisis here at the U.S. border. So with all of this going on, we've been reporting how the Pentagon has been studying civil unrest and what it really is the tipping point of civil unrest and how that kind of relates to social media. They seem to know that, that something is going to be happening and they want to know how can they control it. So I think it's all kind of, you know, curious. Now, we reported on how the Pentagon was researching the civil unrest, but now that ties in directly to that controversial Facebook experiment. Facebook manipulated nearly 700,000 users' news feeds to see whether it would affect their emotions. They would post negative content, and would users also start posting negative content? Would they feel more negative and vice versa? Facebook's controversial emotional study subjecting unwitting users to a psychological conditioning experiment. It has direct ties to research that was funded by the Department of Defense concerning the likelihood of civil unrest. Now, the fact that Facebook unethically experimented on users into how their emotions can be swayed on social media by controlling the content is disturbing in and of itself. But the rabbit hole goes much deeper. Now, the research appears to be in part connected to the Minerva Initiative, which we reported on earlier this month. It provides funding to universities to model the dynamics, risks, and tipping points for large-scale civil unrest across the world. In other words, the DOD wants to master how to predict, prevent, manipulate, control, and even instigate mass civil unrest. And they want to do this by developing operational tools that are related to social, cultural, behavioral, and political forces. Now, within the official credits for the controversial Facebook study, 
Cornell University's Jeffrey T. Hancock is listed as an author. Hancock is also listed on the Pentagon's Minerva Initiative website, where it's noted that he received funding from the Department of Defense for a study called Cornell, Modeling Discourse and Social Dynamics in Authoritarian Regimes. Now, that article is in its entirety up on Infowars.com. It goes into greater detail about how the government is heavily invested in companies whose sole job is to track and monitor social media and how fast things spread through social media. And of course, we're being told that all of this is just for our safety, much like we're being told that smart technology is, is for the greater good, it's for the good of the environment, it's all you know, for the betterment of mankind. Meanwhile, it's actually to track and surveil our every move. Now, a CBS News report is touting the environmental benefits of new smart streetlights. They say the lights are being marketed as a fantastic energy-saving device because they have motion sensors which detect foot traffic and it allows them to switch on and off only when required. And they imagine that all four billion outside streetlights may eventually all be connected in one global network. And this network will be a seamless grid of smart lights that are networked with surveillance cameras tracking an individual's every move. They're also going to be utilizing license plate recognition technology to store data about vehicles. Now, the CBS reporter Bill Whitaker says, in the future, the smart network could track every place we go, everything we buy, everything we do all the time. The technology is limitless. And obviously, they're rolling out this technology faster than lawmakers are able to control how the information is going to be used. That's why we're seeing all sorts of CISPA, SOPA, PIPA things being passed through Congress, but this is advancing so fast, no one really knows how they're gonna be able to utilize all of this information. Of course, we reported last year on the Intella street lights, which had the ability to record and analyze conversations on the street. So I'm sure that these smart lights are gonna have that same upgrade with them as well. At the end of that CBS report, Charlie Rose says, Big Brother's watching, kind of in a tongue-in-cheek sort of way. And Big Brother is indeed watching, but it is not a good thing. It's not something that we should all just be getting used to. And coming up, I'm going to talk about how while we're all being tracked and monitored endlessly our every move, the border is literally left wide open. And this is just one in a series of dueling realities facing American citizens versus illegal immigrants. That's coming right up. Well, one of the claims surrounding this illegal immigration influx is that the White House hasn't sent a clear message that it's not open season at the border. And over the weekend, Nancy Pelosi visited a border facility in Brownsville, Texas, and what she saw there prompted her to tug on the heartstrings of the American people. She says that we have a moral responsibility to help children that are crossing the southern border. But what about these American children that are being treated like terrorists by the TSA? Here we have an 18-month-old and her family that were thrown off a flight because her name was on the no-fly list. Absolute terrorist. And then, you know, here just it goes on and on. We've got a girl that was in a wheelchair. She was headed to Disney World with her family and she was so traumatized by that experience that she told her family, I don't want to go to Disney World anymore because we all just really enjoy getting patted down by the TSA as if we're the terrorists. Meanwhile, it's open season at the border. One of the things that Nancy Pelosi failed to mention is that some of these children are actually active gang members. Now, we've reported before about how border agents are saying that even if these children under 17 admit to actively being in gangs, even if they're covered in gang tattoos, they're ordered to release these known gang members into America as long as they don't have a current criminal record here in the U.S. Meanwhile, cops are using pre-crime techniques to detain